Throughout this quarter, we have seen, we have studied Paul's letter that he wrote to the church that was in Philippi, the letter that was wrote to the church of Ephesus, the letter that was wrote to the Colossian church. And here in our last lesson for the quarter, we're gonna take another look at another letter of Paul, but this letter is different from those letters. This letter is a personal, a personal letter from Paul to one who was named Philemon. And Paul, in this letter, he is writing on behalf of another person, another man, one who was named Onesimus. Now, some of us, we may begin to wonder, well, who is Philemon? We'll begin to wonder, who is Onesimus? Why did Paul, why did he write a personal letter to Philemon on Onesimus' behalf? Let's dive into our lesson here for today. Before we even can jump into the fourth verse where our lesson begins today, we have to take a look at the first verse, the opening verse of the letter, for us to be able to see who Philemon is, and then we'll jump down to the 10th verse to see who, who Onesimus is. There in the first verse, we'll see that Paul, he considered Philemon a beloved friend. He considered Philemon a fellow laborer of the gospel. So we, we have an idea, we have a sense for, for who Philemon is. There's gonna be more, there's gonna be a twist that you will not see coming if you don't, if you aren't familiar with this letter. Now down there in the 10th verse, we'll see that Onesimus was also a friend of Paul. Paul tells us there, we'll see there that Paul, he met Onesimus while he was in chains. That is while he was under arrest. Even more importantly, there in the 11th verse, we'll, we'll see there that Onesimus was once considered unprofitable to Philemon. So, so what does it mean that, that Philemon would have considered Onesimus once unprofitable? What does that mean? Does that mean that, that Philemon was once his employer and that Onesimus was once his employee? Something like that. There's a twist, like I said. The twist here being that, that slavery was once very common in Rome. It didn't, it didn't work how slavery worked in America where depending on your color of skin, if your skin was my color, you ended up being a slave. It didn't work that way. But again, it was very common in Rome and something about the slavery in Rome is that it was very cruel. And something that we'll see here in our lesson for today is that Onesimus ran away from Philemon. That's why he was once considered unprofitable. So Philemon was a slave owner. And again, Onesimus was once a slave himself. And so, you know, when we think about slavery and the mention of cruelty uh, of slavery in Rome, we begin to wonder to ourselves, well, Paul, he's a friend of both of these people. And then we'll begin to wonder, we'll begin to think to ourselves, why was Paul, why was he a friend of a slave owner? You know, we would think so, you know, we'd be so against slavery. And again, you know, we begin to wonder why was Paul a friend of a slave owner? We begin to wonder, well, was Philemon some kind of cruel slave overlord, some kind of cruel slave master? And then again, when we think about that first verse where, where Philemon was described there, we see that Paul considered him not only just a friend, but a fellow laborer in the gospel. And so we begin to think to ourselves, what this slave master, what is he doing being a a, a laborer of the gospel. So we need some more information about Philemon, which is actually given to us there in the fourth verse. I don't believe that, that Philemon was some cruel slave overlord, some cruel slave master. We're told there in the fourth verse, the start of our lesson here today, we'll see that Paul, after his coming greeting, he mentions in the opening verse that he called on Philemon by name in his prayers. When someone calls on you by name in their prayers, that means that you are special. Let me tell you something. It truly means that you that you have a place in their heart if they're calling on you by name in, in their prayers. There in the fifth verse, Paul, he then tells us, again, something more about Philemon's character. Paul said that he had been hearing about Philemon's love. He had also been hearing about Philemon's faith toward God. He had been hearing about Philemon's love and faith toward not just God, but towards all the saints as well. So while he was a slave owner, I believe that Philemon had a heart, a soul that was kind, a heart and a soul that was gentle. And again, the reason why I believe that 
is because he walked by faith. He lived by faith. His faith was in Christ. And faith in, in Christ is all about love. That is the doctrine of Christ, that we are to love the Lord with our whole heart and that we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves as well. Something else that we'll see about Philemon is mentioned again in scripture outside of our lesson there in the second verse where Philemon, he also held church in his house. So it was very likely that, that Philemon was a bishop or a pastor as well. You see, Philemon, something that we, we haven't seen as well in the scripture of our lesson today, is that Philemon, he knew Paul because he learned from Paul. We have to remember, Paul, he went on those missionary journeys before his arrest. He went on those missionary journeys, teaching and sharing the gospel everywhere he could. One of those who received the gospel from Paul was this slave owner. It was Philemon. Philemon, he received the gospel, he believed it, and again, he walked by faith as well. And so we'll see there in the seventh verse that Philemon's works, they were in the gospel, and his works, Paul said, they brought him great joy. Because Philemon's efforts, Paul said there, his efforts, they strengthened the brothers, they strengthened the sisters in Christ. So when we get to the eighth verse here in our Sunday school lesson today, we get to the meat of our Sunday school lesson to where Paul is going to make an appeal here. He's going to, again, make a very bold plea to Philemon to do what is fitting. And again, he's making an appeal on Onesimus' behalf. So Paul is becoming an intercessor. He's becoming an advocate for, for Onesimus, who again, he ran away. It actually takes me to a parable of Jesus where I think of the prodigal son. And in the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus, he, he spoke about a young, the younger son of a man who desired to live apart from, from his dad. He went to his dad. He sought his dad's inheritance and his dad, his dad gave him the inheritance without hesitation. And so the younger son, he took his inheritance, he left home, and he went out and he lived in the world. And we're told in the parable, Jesus said that the younger son, he lived with a prodigal type of living. That means that he lived worldly. He lived with a worldly mindset. And with that mindset, the, the younger son, he wasted away all of the inheritance that he had received for free from his dad. And so when he wasted away all of what his dad had gave to him, he was left with nothing. And the only thing that he could do was go out and work for someone. And then Jesus, he spoke in the parable that there was a great famine that happened in the land. And so this younger son, he ended up suffering away from his dad. He suffered so much that he would look at the slop of pigs and the trough of pigs and he would say, Man, I, I would love, I would love to eat that. That's how bad the younger son had it. So things got so bad for him that the younger son, he said, I, I want to go back home. But then he began to think, I can't go back home. But then he began to think, what do I need to do in order for, for my dad to accept me again? And so the younger son, he made plans to go back home and to apologize to, to, to repent, to seek forgiveness, to seek forgiveness from his dad because he felt that he had did his dad wrong. And so when he returned back home, he made his plea to his dad and his dad had already forgiven him. The, the dad had wiped it all away as soon as he seen his younger son approaching. He went out to his younger son. He, he hugged him. He kissed him on the cheek. He, he dressed him from head to toe. And Jesus said that his dad threw a feast for him. I, I think about that. And, and the dad in that, that parable of Jesus, he was a man who was of faith. And, and when I go over that parable, every time I teach that parable, I teach about how the younger son, he was tired of his dad being this faithful man and and having to live up under the rules of, of a faithful dad. And so he wanted to get out of the house to have a wonderful time. 
So my second thoughts on why Onesimus may have ran away from Philemon was because Philemon was this man of faith. And the and Onesimus may have felt that, that Philemon was trying to force his faith onto him. And so Onesimus, as soon as he had the opportunity to do it, he got out of there. He, he booked it, as my dad would say. He ran for the hills. But he met Paul. And Paul, again, was teaching. He was teaching the gospel. And I imagine that Onesimus, you know, he began to, to remember Philemon, how, how Philemon was running a church out of his home. And, and when Onesimus went in, he introduced himself to Paul, and, and he began to believe himself. I imagine that Onesimus said, Paul, you remind me of, of my old slave owner, a man named Philemon, who was running church out of his house. And Paul likely said, oh, Philemon, I know old Philemon. I taught Philemon. It's good to hear that, that he's doing those things, which again, it leads to the letter that we are studying today. It leads to, to again, Paul writing on Onesimus' behalf because I feel like Onesimus, he desired to go back. He desired to go back to Philemon, but he may have felt like the prodigal son that, that Philemon wouldn't have him wouldn't accept him back. And so we'll see that Paul, he writes again on Onesimus' behalf there. We'll see there in the 15th verse that Onesimus is running away. It may have been all part of God's plan. He wrote to Philemon that maybe all of this was God's plan for Onesimus and that Onesimus, you know, he should return. And there in the 16th verse, his return shouldn't be that as a slave. Paul said that his return, this man, once a he's learned, he has grown in the spirit, and his return should be one as a brother in Christ who can now help you out. He can now, he was once unprofitable to you, Philemon, but now he can be profitable to you. He can help you to uplift others. He can help you to encourage others to come to Christ, to gain a salvation. Again, that's something that we have been studying all year long now about salvation, the importance of salvation. And Paul is saying now, hey, this one who ran away from you, he can now be of help to you. He doesn't have to be a slave. He can be your brother in Christ. So like I said, this is truly a, a beautiful letter to where we see Paul standing again in the role of an advocate. We see Paul standing in the role of an intercessor here as well. We see three believers who have all come together by way of the Spirit. And we see one believer saying, hey, be sure to forgive this other believer who may have, he may have wronged you, he may have did wrong, but forgive him. I feel like this is something that all of us today, again, when we think about all that we have learned this quarter, we see unity here, or we see Paul at least ascribing for unity. And I feel like this is something that all of us as believers, this is how we should work today to where, again, we help each other out. When one has wronged the other, we shouldn't help one put down the other, all right? Just because someone has wronged another, we should help that one who, you know, who did the wrong. We should, again, help them in their walk of repentance, help them rebuild themselves back up so that they can be correct. We should, again, as Paul said throughout this quarter, we should work together. We should work to uplift each other. Paul, we'll see there in the 17th verse, as our letter, this letter, this lesson, it already starts to come to a close here. We'll see that Paul, he closes out the letter by saying to Philemon, if you count me as a partner again in the gospel, Paul said, receive him as you would me. So again, Paul is saying there, forgive him. You would forgive me. Make sure you forgive him. He is a brother in Christ. Paul, he said there in the 18th verse, he said, hey, if he wronged you, he said, if he owes you anything, Paul said, lay it on me. Put it on my account. And there in the 19th verse, we'll see Paul say something that you will get a chuckle out of there. Paul, he said to Philemon, hey, hey, you owe me one. You owe me one. Forgive him. You, you, you owe me one. Do this one. Do this one for me, Paul says there. So, so, you know, we begin to wonder, 
Well, did did Philemon, did he forgive Onesimus? Did Onesimus return? And, and upon his return, did, did Philemon forgive him? Now, if you turn over to the fourth chapter of Colossians and you take a look at the ninth verse, do you notice something there in that ninth verse? Do you see a name that looks very familiar there in that ninth verse? We'll see that Onesimus is actually mentioned in Paul's letter to the Colossian church. The Colossian church, Colossians, that's where Philemon was actually located at as well. So we have to do a bit of cross-referencing to, to get this, but in the verses preceding that ninth verse there in the fourth chapter, you'll see a name that we cross-reference over to Philemon there in the opening of Philemon. We'll see another name that connects Philemon to the Colossian church. And so I do believe that when Onesimus returned, I do believe that Philemon as Paul said, you owe me one. I believe that Philemon, he, he accepted once on his back. So yeah, what a, like I said, a beautiful letter, a beautiful sight. Again, where we see believers working together to where we see believers uplifting each other as well. Now, something that I do want to point out that I'm not going to overlook here in our lesson this week about the letter to Philemon is that this was another letter of Paul that Paul wrote uh, while he was arrested, while he was in prison. This is shown to us there in the 13th verse. If you take a look at the 13th verse there, you'll see that Paul said that if it did not please Philemon to accept Onesimus again, he could send Onesimus back to minister to Paul while he was in his chains. So again, like I said, uh, a beautiful letter where again, we see believers, we see them again working together. That's something that I believe all of us, we should ascribe for today where, you know, there are times where we will have to be an advocate for, for each other. And we should take the opportunity to do that as often as we can to again, help to uplift each other. Something else that I want to point out here as we come to a close here in our lesson today is that Paul, he kind of plays in a role. He, 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 is the picture of Christ as well here in that Christ, he is our advocate today. We have an advocate, we have an intercessor. We see Paul play the role that Christ plays for us today, where Christ, when, when we fall down, when we mess up, when we error, Christ, he is our advocate. He intercedes on our behalf. He pleads our, clay, our case uh, to, to the Father to, to again, to have mercy on us, to, to forgive us, he says, hey, that's ours. That's our child. So again, that's also something that is beautiful for us to see as well. So again, like I said, very important here, all of what we have seen this quarter to where we as believers, we should not tear each other down. That's the last thing that we should do is tear each other down. We should help each other out. We should love one another. And again, in this love, we should uplift each other to heights that is unimaginable to me. We can do it again. I believe sincerely that we can do it so long as we walk by faith. And that faith is a faith that is of love. It is of mercy and that it is of grace as well. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the Food for Thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.